Hi, Jason Walker, Walker Tea Review. Uh, my background has often been with Chinese teas, and those are the, some of the ones that I came to appreciate and, and love first. But uh, later on in my experience, I also came to admire a lot of the Darjeelings. So we have a Darjeeling here today, uh, or many pe some people would pronounce it Darjeeling. So we're going to get some of this ready to go. This is a Daggio's Ooh Darjeeling. So that looks like a good amount. I'm using a fairly small cup, so you can be subtle with these leaves. I'm going to rinse this one off. Yeah. Now. Already, aromas are getting released. Tea, of course, is a experience for your senses, especially the nose. So, of course, you're tasting your teas, but be sure that you're you're giving yourself the time and the opportunity to smell your teas, because that is definitely worthwhile. What we have, as we were saying, is Adagio's Ooh Darjeeling. Um, information or steeping instructions just indicate we should steep this at around 212 degrees um, for five minutes because um, a, dar a first flush, as we indicate, or the website tells us, that this is a first flush and it actually comes from the Galpaldara estate. Okay, now a lot of these kind of first flushes they have elements of a Wulong because they are more lightly oxidized than a lot of your black teas, but yet. Of course, Darjeeling is known more predominantly, or at least originally, as a more of a black tea type area. So, this gives us an idea of what we have. What you will see, as we said, because it has goes through a lower or a shorter oxidation period, you will see some you will see some rust brown leaves that have had more full oxidation. You will see some kind of silvery gold pieces as well and then you will still see find some some brown to rich dark green leaves as well so it's a good mixture it's a it's a rainbow and the rainbow here has quite a bit of a a fruity element the the, the fruit often associated with a green like this uh, or i should say a, a darjeeling a first flush like this is a grape element okay so those are some of the expectations that we have does it have a, a grape that goes into our cup so that's what we can talk about in just a moment yes that is sufficiently steeped to give us an impression of the color to let us talk about aromas okay there now I'm going to set this aside and have a look at our leaves for just a moment. Now, because, because it is kind of a transition uh, between a, an, a, an, a Wulong and a black tea, I'm getting that brisk kind of tannin smell that's associated with some of your black teas. It does have a kind of a yeah, a sweet element. Now, also the leaf color, although we said we had a variety of colors here, a lot of those colors I'm getting a, a, a rich uh, kind of a coppery or rust red. I'm getting some dark greens in our wet leaf. Okay, I'm getting a, and then a few of the, the richer, darker browns as well. Okay, so that is worth noting. That kind of gives you an, an idea of what this tea should look like. Uh, what it should feel or smell like as well. So, um, this tasting and in previous tastings, we can talk a little bit about what our experiences were. Um, we'll look at my notes so that I don't forget anything. Yes, we do have a wiry, dry leaf, variety of colors. We had a wet tannin element smell to our wet leaf. Also, previous 
I did get a bit of kind of a tomato, tomatoey smell to it. Um, also a little bit of a, of a grape smell to it. That's characteristic, of course. Now, let's also talk about our liquid. In previous tastings, I pulled out a little bit of, if you've ever had a dried rose tea, there's, or, or a rose, if you've ever had like a rose-based perfume or a rose oil, a fragrant rose element did come out in this as well. Other thing, go to your supermarket, grocery store, farmer's market, if you see tomatoes still sold on the vine, go or if you have the little cap that's still attached to the top of your fresh tomatoes, scratch that a little bit. Get, get through that green a little bit. Maybe get a little green stain on your thumb. Give that a smell. There's a, there's a smell that it's it's close to a citrus, but not but different from a citrus. And that kind of tomato vine smell is was represented here in, in previous tastings as well. Um, that gets a little background. Let me also talk, let me give it a taste and see if those things are coming out here. Yeah, I'm getting the tomato smell already, tomato vine smell. Yeah. Now, other things that I'm detecting. I get a, a very faint kind of smoke element to it. It's not like cigarette smoke, and it's not like a, a strong pine smoke. It's um, it is a kind of a, like a wood fired uh, wood fire in your barbecue type type smoke. So more like a hickory or something like that. I'm also getting that tomato element that kind of continues. Very hint, very light hint of kind of a tomato juice. And that's towards the back. The smoky part that I just mentioned is a little towards the front. Let me look at my notes. And as again, we did detect a little bit of that kind of tannin taste. So there is a still a briskness that's characteristic of, of red teas. But again, not as full and as strong as, as, a, as a regular black tea. So, having put all this together, to talk about this one. We gave this one an 85 simply because some of the elements are like that rose element that I mentioned. I find that more often associated with some of your some of your second flush Darjeeling's. So I would I like the briskness which is also more of a second flush, more mature leaf. So I think this one kind of bridges between the two. Um, so to having said that it there are some characteristics that it should have and some that go into another kind of tea. A good bridge between the two if you like the if you like elements of both the first and second flush. But this one gets an 85. This one is again Adagio's Ooh Darjeeling. I'm Jason Walker, Walker Tea Review.